Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and today we're taking a look at the Decepticon Military Patrol. We've got Bomb Shock and Growl. And of course, in true fashion here, on this channel, we will take a look at them alongside their Generation 1 counterparts. As we can see, there are some substantial differences between the two. So let's take a look at them individually and see where this goes. Alright, for starters, we'll take a look at Bomb Shock. Bomb Shock, of course, in the G1 era was the leader of the team. <clears throat> and he was well known for using physical violence on anybody that didn't go along with his plans, or just to keep his men in line. Of course, the, what most fans didn't like was the obvious cannon sticking out on him. In terms of articulation, you could rotate his arms at the shoulder. You could bend his legs at the hip 90 degrees, and you could bend him at the knee. 90 degrees. All in all, pretty standard MicroMaster format. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, folks, I just lost my chair for some reason. Well, we'll go without it for a while and see how we fare. Here, of course, is Modern Bomb Shock. I do like the fact the cannon is a little smaller on him, but I don't think that's really going to be much better. I do, however, like the Decepticon symbol on his chest. That's a nice improvement. At any rate, let's take a look at his articulation. We can rotate his arms at the shoulder all the way around. He can twist at the hips. His legs can be spread apart almost into a full split. And he can raise his leg up about so far and bend his leg at the knee 90 degrees. Alright, it's time to transform these guys and get my seat back. Alright, we got our tanks. We got our chair. So let's get on with the review. And the one thing I immediately notice on them is how cartoony the new one sort of looks. And this kind of looks like it'd be more reminiscent out of an old video game. Whereas the original G1 version did look more like a realistic tank. Simplified, of course, but somewhat more realistic. Of course, you could turn the turret all the way around uh, here on the new one. You can do the same. There's just another that Hasbro and Takara are avoiding making them look like real vehicles to avoid fees. But this one just looks a little too cartoony for my taste. All right, let's take a look at Growl, shall we? Okay, here's Growl. As we can see, there is a substantial color difference on the two toys. The original kept it very minimal, so I do like the fact that the new one did improve upon that a bit. And, of course, both of them have an optional gun. Let's take a look at the new one's gun here real quick so that any of you who might buy this toy loose have some idea as to what you're getting. It's done up in a silver paint. Hopefully a better quality silver paint than what we had in the 1980s. Looks pretty good and somewhat on the menacing side. 
Old Growl was limited on his arm articulation to just 90 degree rotation. Or basically you could do it at a 45 degree angle. That was it. But you could bend him at the hips 90 degrees and you could bend his legs at the knees. Relatively standard for some Micromasters. Modern Growl. You can raise his arms out a bit. And his arms do rotate at the shoulder. You just have to watch for the front of the car when you go around the back. His legs do spread apart and do almost full splits. And he can raise them up about 90 degrees and bend his leg at the knee 90 degrees. So all in all, a nice improvement. Apparently his head is on some sort of hinge. So his head can rock back and forth. Now we'll go ahead and transform these guys into their attack vehicle mode. Okay, for this mode, Growl certainly benefits from the improvement. As the original one was famously painted black on the sides, which almost indicated that there was no doors on the side of this vehicle. Which would seem kind of silly. This one, however, corrects that error by making it clear that there are doors and clearly defined windows. It also has a more clearly defined front grille. So all in all, he definitely improves upon his G1 form. That is, if he'd clipped Quit slipping out of my fingers. How well does he roll on the table, though? He rolls fairly good. Let's see how his buddy Bomb Shock does. Not good at all. But of course, he has no wheels under these fake treads. Alright, let's get ready for the weapon mode, folks. Brace yourselves. And once again, modeling with ironworks. We see here how they look as a combined weapon, and it's still dumb, folks. No way around it. And of course, just like with the Hot Rod Patrol before them, they don't have any listing in the instructions as to what kind of gun this is. Hold on a second, my phone's ringing. As I was saying, the weapon mode again, it just looks dumb, folks. Now, of course, my thoughts on them in general. Well, Bomb Shock, the robot mode, it's not bad. The tank mode looks kind of silly. Growl got some significant improvements between the two modes. The robot mode isn't too bad. The vehicle mode is definitely superb. Just unfortunately, like with all the MicroMasters in this modern line, a lot of their a lot of the goodness is lost once you see them get put together as a weapon. So, Unfortunately, the weapon modes, they still suck. Any rate, that concludes my review of the Decepticon Military Patrol Earthrise version. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this video, drop me a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button so you can join our ranks. And ring the bell so you'll be notified when I post new content. Also, please share this video with your friends to help this channel grow, and share your thoughts about the Military Patrol in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.